They had said earlier they were getting some fault signals on that master alarm, however, and uh, it may be meaningless. This shows the docking procedure that took place just a minute and a half ago as that probe went into the uh, drogue and three small latches clamped it into a position just 10 inches away. It's called soft docking. Now they'll file that nitrogen bottle that Leo told us about a little earlier that will pull them together and uh, seal them so that they can equalize the pressure between the two spacecraft and then open up between the two of them and later uh, in the mission two of the astronauts McDivitt and Schweikert can crawl through that tunnel into the uh, lamp. Leo as we await uh, more word from the spacecraft itself we'll keep our ears tuned for further communications with it uh, go ahead and tell us what has just transpired there. Uh, well, Walter, the, uh, I imagine Dave was trying to get his translational errors nulled out and get that standoff cross exactly superimposed on the back cross. When he did that, he maneuvered his vehicle to put his, his sight reticle in the window on the target, and then he drove in uh, to make the docking. And evidently, uh, he had a satisfactory docking. He did report a master alarm, but uh, we'll have to wait more information on that, I presume. Now, what does that, Leo, what does a master alarm mean? Does that mean that any, one, any single thing could malfunction, or does it mean it's a critical malfunction, or what? Well, we have a system in the vehicle, Walter, where we uh, monitor numerous parameters of all the systems. And if any of these parameters uh, go out of limits, it triggers a master alarm, which lights a red light on the pilot's uh, panel right here. Uh, which, and also gives him a tone in his ear, which alerts him to the fact that something has gone wrong. He then goes up to this panel in the center, and that will pinpoint where the problem lies, which system is malfunctioned. Now, at the same time, NASA is receiving all of these parameters, plus a lot more on telemetry. So the NASA is probably right now analyzing what caused the master alarm, and I'm sure they'll be coming back and telling us what the problem is. Uh, thank you, Leo. We're going back and listen to this uh, uh, communication for the ship. With uh, tremendous purpose scarcity and uh, Amazing timing. I managed to do that just as the transmission quit. What we did here just a moment ago is the angles looked just right uh, of the docking, and the ground said it looks okay to us. With uh, tremendous purpose scarcity and uh, amazing timing. I managed to do that just as the transmission quit. What we did here just a moment ago is the angles looked just right uh, of the docking and the ground said it looks okay to us. There doesn't seem to be any concern about this master control problem. The docking seems to have gone well. We wait for further transmission from the spaceship. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 9 will continue in a moment. Forget everything you've ever known about size. Forget that an inch exists. We're taking you into a world where a speck of dust is a boulder and a human hair a rod. It's a sub-miniature world that we're working in now at Western Electric and Bell Telephone Laboratories. A world of complex electronic circuits. Some so tiny they can pass through the eye of a needle. At Western Electric, research engineers are finding new ways to make, test, and assemble these circuits. 
be making them by the millions for new phones and equipment Bell Telephone Companies will use to serve you. This is the kind of thing we do at Western Electric, finding new and better ways to make the things your phone calls are made of. Let's listen to a transmission from the Apollo 9. Two answers worked uh, just right. There were no oscillations after we captured. Uh, we lined it up and uh, did the retract, and it took about 10 seconds, and it sounded like we got a good solid lock. Uh, Roger, Apollo 9. Uh, copied all that real good. They were reporting from the uh, spaceship that they had had uh, a a malfunction unexplained as to why in the uh, reaction control system thrusters on the command module. That would be these little quads here, they're called. Uh, if I could see that on the, on the air here, uh, there, or here you can even see it on the larger model over here to my right. This is the command module in the docked configuration as it is now with the ascent stage of the limb and the descent stage of the limb. And these things out here are the so-called quads. That is, uh, there are four thrusters of 100 pounds each uh, that control attitude and can be used for maneuvering, of course, are used for maneuvering of the spacecraft. Uh, two of those quads uh, did not work at one point in their maneuver as they were coming back into dock and uh, gave them, apparently, a moment or two problem. They uh, must have mastered it uh, because they have gotten in, they have docked, and they say they are locked in uh, with, the, uh, with the limb at this time. Uh, whether that means that a complete hard dock, that is the full lock of all 16 of the locks, which, uh, which hold the two together and eventually pull them into where they can be pressurized and the pressure equalized and the tunnel opened, uh, I'm not exactly clear yet. We haven't had that clarified by mission control or uh, by the transmission from the spaceship. But all seems to be going well. They said... Oh, nine, this is Houston. Uh, we'll have another state vector for you over Bermuda. They are now over the United States uh, on the end of the... Overhead about this time, uh, Apollo 9, you ought to be over Texas. They're over Texas uh, on this particular orbit, uh, around 150 miles north of Houston, I believe. This particular pass. This is the end of the second revolution of this flight that will keep them in orbit if all goes as according to plan for 10 full days. The critical times uh, come, uh, well, they're coming now with this first docking, and then tomorrow with the test firing of the uh, service propulsion system engine of the uh, command service module here, this engine, 20,500 pounds of thrust to test uh, the dynamics of the, of the three spacecraft linked together in this fashion, three of those tests tomorrow. And uh, then on Wednesday, the uh, two astronauts climb into the LEM for the first test of the LEM firing up its engine. On Thursday, Schweikert makes a space walk. He comes out of the small hatch uh, down here in the, in the front of the LEM and walks back up in here and over to the hatch on the command module, down into that hatch, standing up in the seat, uh, then back on a two and a hour and 15 minute walk and back into the LEM. And on Friday, the maneuvers in which they separate and uh, go into uh, their maneuver and have to re-rendezvous. We'll be back with all of the details, of course, of this flight of Apollo 9 as they occur. This is Walter Cronkite at the CBS News Apollo Center, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. This has been a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 9, brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System as part of their continuing coverage of important news events. Next Apollo update later today on the CBS Evening News. This is CBS.